do on LinkedIn that really doesn't help them at all in getting ahead in their business. Um, we're going to be hosted um, today by Bert, who is a LinkedIn expert, founder of the Re LinkedIn um, company, and one of the um, we are one of the first certified LinkedIn trainers worldwide. And Bert is also the co-author of How to Really Use LinkedIn, which hopefully most of you have now downloaded. If you haven't, you can get a free copy at www.reallinkedin.co.uk. And he's also the author of uh, The Little LinkedIn for Dummies, a book which is all available in Dutch. Um, he's worked with many, many companies, 450 companies actually in Europe, including the UK, and uh, many big names that you'd recognize. I mean, and, and yeah, many of them. All right. Thank you, um, Naomi, for the lovely introduction. So what's on the agenda today? We'll talk about LinkedIn as LinkedIn is business. And as you can see on the slide, serious business. Um, a lot of people are mistaking LinkedIn just for an online social media. And it's much more than that. So we'll briefly touch base on that. We'll talk about the biggest mistake people make on LinkedIn. We'll talk about some elements about your pro profile, mistakes people make on their profile. Of course, we don't have time to go through all of these, uh, but just a number of things that I want to touch base on. Recommendation flops, some examples of how people write recommendations and, of course, endorsements are in there as well, what you can do to improve that. We'll talk about common email mistakes. If you don't know what an email is, I'll explain you that later on as well. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with some account and settings where you can have an idea of what you can do uh, to go on. So once more, welcome at this uh, webinar on how to really use LinkedIn. And let's get rid of the LinkedIn bloopers. It's the 4th of July, American USA Independence Day, and we'll get rid of the bloopers today on LinkedIn. That's our goal. So let's get uh, started. And the first thing is why using LinkedIn? Well, a number of uh, elements are uh, interesting to know is that LinkedIn has more than 225 million professional users. It's the biggest professional online network in the world. Of course, it's different than Facebook. Facebook's more on the, on the personal side, sharing information, pictures, updates with your friends and families and, and other uh, people, while LinkedIn is mainly used for, uh, for business. To give you an idea, it took them eight years to get into the 110 million and about two years to get to 225 million. That means 100% growth in less than two years. All right. Just to give you an idea, there are about 12 million UK users. That also means 10% growth in four months. Most of the people on this webinar are from the UK, so that's why I put these uh, in. Of course, there's more available there. Why is LinkedIn serious business? Well, you don't have to take my word for it, but here is an example of a client that we trained, and in less than two weeks, they got 500,000 uh, found client using our techniques. So if you are looking for new customers, if you're looking for new employees, LinkedIn is probably one of the best channels for you to find them. If you want to know how, of course, you can hire us, but this is not uh, a webinar where we are selling stuff. So let's move on with the rest of the webinar. So the biggest mistake that a lot of people are uh, making is that they are using LinkedIn as a passive billboard rather than as a tool. All right. So what you see is that a lot of people are getting invitations from people in their network to join uh, LinkedIn. What happens is that after a while, they get on LinkedIn. They say, well, it seems to be something important. And so what they do is they sign up an account on LinkedIn. They set aside some time to say yes to a number of invitations they are getting and they will set up a basic profile. And one of the things we will see is that some people have a basic profile and left it just there. And they're just using LinkedIn as a billboard and not a very good one, as I will show you some funny examples later on and also some serious examples, I must say. Um, now, what we are trying to do is show you how you can use LinkedIn as a proactive tool and a proactive tool where it is really important that what is going on on LinkedIn is that you can use as a tool to find the people you'll be looking for, whether it be new clients, new employees, investors, maybe experts, maybe some other people, sharing expertise with other uh, people. That's why you can use LinkedIn as a tool and a platform for it. All right. So 
one basic fundamental principle before we say anything about the, the mistakes people make is a fundamental principle about networking. It's called the no like and trust factor. Our American colleague Bob Burke says it well when he says, all things being equal, people do business with and refer business to people they know, like and trust. So it's almost about building a relationship with people. What I see people do sometimes is they go in too harsh, too direct immediately without having a relationship in place. So the know, like and trust factor is something you build up over time. It's something you build up. If people don't know you, how will they trust you? How will they do business with you? If people don't like you, will they really into helping you? I don't think so. They rather help people they uh, like very much. And knowing and liking you might be two prerogatives before they even start trusting you. So this is something you built up over time. And as you will see later on with some of the examples, you can lose it in less than five seconds. So hang on to that. By the way, if you just joined this uh, webinar, feel free to join us at our Facebook group as well, facebook.com slash group slash real LinkedIn, where you can connect with others and also, also ask us also a number of uh, questions. We'll be handing out some real nice bonuses as well. Now let's go on to the profiles. One of the things that I feel is that when I browse around and I'm looking for people's profiles is that some people seem to be really on fire. Oops, here is an example, Mark Anthony Rhodes. And as you can see, he is on fire on this profile picture. It's not a good example of what I feel like is really a professional image, but hey, some people are in there taking a bath and that's where they are, you know, showing off online. All right. That's probably not the best way to, um, to show uh, who you are, but there are some divine, divine interventions as well. Here is Tanya. Um, and as you can see, she has a really beautiful aura. I'm not sure if that's the way she wants to be noticed. Um, some people think they're in the monkey business. Well, Michael seems to be uh, right there. It seems like it's better not to mess with him because this monkey has a gun in his hand. All right. So this is a. These are four examples of people live on LinkedIn today. How they are using their picture profile uh, or so their their profile picture to show who they are, what they what they are doing. Not really good examples. Of course, we can laugh at it, um, but. How difficult is it really to make a picture? Now for this pe uh, person, Kathleen, I'm not so sure if um, a four-year-old can take a picture, but she's in a way, maybe it's on purpose. I don't know. Some people say, I don't want to put a picture, just a yellow square uh, there. Well, I don't know what is really going on within his mind. He's a talent acquisition manager. Um, Sarah, I'm not sure what Sarah is trying to get across here. It's definitely definitely our, our kids or maybe some superhero as you can see here the little guy on the on, on the right um, so if this is the way you try to get a job because this is the icon which you see here next to third uh, says that she's a job seeker um, and it says also in a professional headline so she's a freelancer so if the, if this is the way you want to try to sell or to get um, a new job by getting your kids in uh, to play, that might not be the best strategy to use. Now here's another guy, Jeremy Salman. Um, I don't even know what kind of animal this is, but it's probably not the best way to uh, introduce yourself uh, if you're a creative director or a partner. Um, it might be that it's useful, but I don't find um, it very interesting to look at these kinds of um, pictures. I'm not sure about you. Yeah, it is probably an ant eater. Um, you're right, uh, Andy and you. Um, by the way, what do you find about these uh, pictures? Let's uh, hear in the chat um, what is going on here. Is you see a number of uh, of pictures of people's uh, profiles. I have another uh, couple of another set of uh, people's profile. Um, I'm not sure what year this picture was taken, but it looks like it was back in the 70s before LinkedIn was um, even around. So I, I find it very uh, interesting. Also notice that he has some acronyms next to his name, PMP, SCPM, ITIL, CSM, definitely an IT uh, guy. Um, now this guy is really back in, into the 70s. He's another recruiter. I'm not sure what he tries to get across. Um, thumbs up, of course, on this picture. 
but it's it's really really funny if you you know browse around in the this by the way there's more people stuck in the 70s how about this guy craig morris senior manager product uh, pricing and claims lenders mortgage insurance at bt financial group uh, have a whiskey have a drink on me um he looks a bit like inspector colombo do you remember from the from the television show back in the 80s and again it's all about first impressions and and is this the way you want to present yourself is this you the way you want to look professional and at your best i know that some people have have a great sense of humor don't get me wrong i also uh like that but this might be just pushing it too much another one is pat cross i chose her because this is definitely a picture from way back and i'm really curious how she would look like today now again this is from experience that i meet a lot of people and what i do before i go to an event or to and let's say a conference is that i look up other participants who are going as well uh, going as well and so what happens is that sometimes i meet people and i'm really looking at them and i you know they look familiar but there's something wrong with them and then i figure out hi hang on this is what happened i looked you up on linkedin and you've sent your mother or your father to this event didn't you and then people start laughing they you know they confess that their picture is really old and their picture is about 20 30 sometimes 40 years ago and then yeah it really you know it's making a mess of first impressions isn't it so how to make a good profile picture well this is an example of one of our clients and Catherine zoller she works at ING, one of the major banks, and you will see that she, her picture is really clear. She's smiling a little bit. It's a first impression. It's a professional uh, look and feel when you look at it. Here's another one. Rob Brown is a colleague of ours, uh, also a professional speaker, and you can see nice uh, suit, smiling a little bit, and this is how, when you meet him in person, this is how he really looks um, like. Now, some people say, hey, there might be a number of things that you can do to optimize your pictures. Yes, you can. And some people say, hey, I can also, I also would like to bring into this uh, our branding. Well, yes, you can. And here's an example of John. John Muir works at uh, LinkedIn, as you, can, uh, as you can see in the picture. And he's still in there. You can see the smile. Not so sure if the scarf is a good idea. But hey, it's his, uh, his uh, profile picture. But branding can be brought into your profile picture. Another person here is Marcel from the Netherlands. He works at AAG. And you see he's uh, here smiling, looking uh, professional. But of course, only looking at his profile doesn't give away that it is a, a, a nice uh, way. But if I bring in some of his colleagues, you will see that they brought in a color of their logo in the background of their pictures. And as you can see, they're all kind of a greenish, bluish. Uh, background so and this is how they want to stand out if you look people up in the search result there are a number of people who have this blue greenish uh, picture in the profile and people might tend to click on that a little bit more so that's what, how they look at it uh, from a branding perspective how can we use branding i talked to some people at ing at the bank and they of course their colors are uh, orange and what happens there is that when you look at them, some of them have like an orange detail, like an orange wristwatch or an orange uh, bracelet or an orange tie. And so they're bringing a little bit subtle uh, some of the branding elements into their profile pictures. OK, so this is examples of how to how to do it. A again, here are some tips, five tips to wrap it up, sum it up. Make sure it's a professional picture. Leave out the drinks, leave out the vacation, the beach. I, the other day I had someone who had a picture of the sea. Well, it's nice. Does that mean you are empty head, head, headed or what is going on really, right? Make it a hot shot. No, sorry, not a hot shot, a head shot better. Um, not from your desk, not your just your feet, not just the full body, just your headshot will do, all right? And it doesn't hurt to smile a little bit. Sometimes when I cruise around, especially in the UK, especially in the, in the Netherlands, sometimes it looks like half of the people on LinkedIn just escaped from prison, right? If you look at their pictures, it's like the, the name tag or the, the, the number tag just was cut off uh, out of their picture. It's really, you know, you're scaring away people. So don't do that. Smile a little bit, relax in front of the, uh, of the camera and make sure that you are in, uh, 
showing your best part of your uh, of your face all right the background should be neutral or maybe branded but again if you bringing a brand make it a little bit um, on the back end side maybe on, on the corner of, of the image um, the examples that I showed you um, give you a first impression of how to do it and of course make it an up-to-date picture people should recognize you when people check you out online and believe me people do that more and more these days that you want to be recognized all right make sure that they are there by the way if you have any questions uh, show um, show them in the chat function here or on Facebook and we'll uh, we'll get the number of questions live answered uh, here so Kathy your your question about smiling with teeth or no teeth well it's important to have teeth when you smile, um, but I would say yes, um, even if you have uh, dark colored uh, teeth, it might be an interesting way to, uh, to smile a little bit. If you're afraid that uh, a number of holes in your teeth will uh, show up, then don't uh, use a smile with, uh, with the teeth uh, viewer then, all right? Let's move on. So the next part is what is in the, what's in the name, all right? A number of people, I don't know what's in their head, but what they do is, they set up a profile with the name of the company, 07 Antalya Villas Real Estate, Turkey, UK. Antalya is definitely a city in, in Turkey, so this is not even allowed by LinkedIn. And, and there's a number of people out there who just create a profile based on their on their company, not even on, as a person. That goes against LinkedIn rules and policies, all right? This is an account that is bound to be closed down. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that LinkedIn has a team inside that goes and visits all the profiles. Now, it takes them a while to go through, through 225 million accounts. But believe me, they are there and they will you know, at least suspend this profile and then will probably delete the profile after all because they see it's against LinkedIn's um, policy, all right? Why is it against uh, LinkedIn's policy? Well, you can only set up a personal account, of course, one of the things you can do with LinkedIn is you can create a company page as well, but you start with a personal profile always. LinkedIn is a platform for persons. Unlike Facebook, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Facebook, but on Facebook, you will find pets. You'll find cats and dogs and, and horses and even other animals. I haven't checked for, for um, the ant eaters, but definitely there's a number of animals on Facebook. Now it doesn't stop there. Also, aliens are on Facebook, but not on LinkedIn, all right? LinkedIn is for professional use, and one of the elements in their policy is that you can set up a, you can set up a profile based on your person, all right? What happens if a client has gone and done this? Do we close the account and start again? Yes, that's one of the things you can, uh, you can do, is uh, if a client has done this, close down the account if you don't well it's just a matter of time LinkedIn will do it uh, will do it uh, for you all right one better way is to replace that by a person's name excuse me and create a professional uh, company page uh, based on that personal profile that's one uh, way to do it all right cool other examples this is a guy, and I guess he's from Korea because it says in his um, in his um, region Korea. He's in telecommunications. I can I get that, but what about his name? All right, I'm I don't speak Korean. I'm not sure about you. I'm not sure if this guy wants to be found. By the way, and look at his the number of his connections. He has zero connections. So I I get that. People don't don't get me wrong here. I of course I give a lot of. Um, um examples which are negative but the goal is to make it better for everyone all right you, you get that obviously so what i see here is that there's a guy from sk telecom in korea with his name in korean which is fine but what i would do is i would also put it in let's say for the rest of the world readable characters so of course if his goal is to remain only in korea then it's perfect to have it in in korea again don't get me wrong here but it might be easier to connect with friends from all, all over the world to have his um, name written with the regular alphabet as well. All right? So this is a number of people where you can see that they got something wrong in their name. Now, this is a guy, Erwin Dupont, uh, who's an engineer. And what he did is a classic mistake. He put his last name in the first name field and his first name, Erwin, in the last name field. Now, 
Of course, this is a guy who's, again, looking for a job. As you can see here, the briefcase indicates that he's a job seeker. What happens now is that he's not going to be found very easily because if people type in his name in the advanced search, then he won't be found, all right? Because his first name is in last name field and his first name is in last name field. So that's ridiculous, okay? And I know how it happens. It's because people, when they don't have time, they do it in a, you know, in a jiffy, try to make it fast and efficient, and then they, they misread one of the field names, and there you go, all right? You wouldn't believe how many people that I meet who are misspelling their own names, okay? This doesn't even count as a misspelling, all right? Even people who can't write their own names, is this a person you want to do, you know, do business with? Is this a person you want to hire? I don't think so, all right? So if you misspell your own name, if you don't use the name fields correctly, how in hell will you be found? No? That's the answer. It's, it's very hard to be found, so let alone that people start doing business or building a relationship with you, all right? So, next one. How basic can you get, all right? This is Tai Yun. I, I hope that I pronounce his or her name pr uh, correctly. This is his or her complete profile. I was surprised that he or she has 11 connections, all right? Just a name, nothing else. All right. There's nothing else in the profile. That that's just it. Why do you have a profile after all? Eleven connections. That's just prove my point that this is a bad example of a billboard. All right. If people look you up to do business with you, what do they find about you? All right. This. All right. What does that say about you? Again, it's not it's not easy because this is another example. This is a CPA, Joyce Cho. All right. Fifty two connections. Better. But if she's looking for new customers, how are you going to be found? Just by your name. And maybe, maybe if you're lucky, when people type in CPA, all right? But the thing is, this is too basic. How basic can you get, really? Come on, people. There's more to, um, more to that than just this. Now, there's one more thing. CEO. This is Ralph. I gave the example of ING earlier. This is the CEO at ING Bank Belgium. Is, if you were a job seeker, is this the kind of company you want to work for? Really? Is this is the CEO you want to look up to? He has an empty profile. I, I agree he has almost 200 connections, but no picture there. Nothing on his background. It just says that he's a CEO and that's it. All right. So it's really funny to see how people are looking at it. All right. Now, the good news is that this CEO at least has a LinkedIn profile. All right. Not a good one, but what what is that if you don't have a, a you know CEO of, the CEO of Barclays Bank doesn't have a profile the CEO of a couple of other banks in the UK don't have a profile if you're looking for a new job if you are let's say a unit manager if you want to apply for a top job and your colleagues don't even have a LinkedIn profile what are we talking about I mean do you really want to work for that kind of a, a company especially if they if they say that they are innovative is that the kind of company you'll be working for if they don't have a LinkedIn profile or not even decent LinkedIn profile, all right? What about people who use lowercase style um, choice? Do you think in this arena that works or just reflects badly? Well, there are, there's a discussion going on about everything in lowercase how, um, capitals or everything in capitals. What I like the most is that the first capital uh, for the first part of your, let's say for, for every part of your, uh, of your name, every part uh, with capitals or the way it is written all right you will see later on some examples of people's name with lower cases because it's the official way it is written what i don't like is that people are abusing the name field with adding a lot of other stuff i showed you the example of the it guy earlier on from the 70s where he put in pmp and itil you, you just don't do that it's again against the linkedin's policy user policy okay that you're not allowed. Some people put in their, their email address or their phone number. It's allowed against the law, well, against the policy at least of, um, of LinkedIn. All right. There's different 
uh, different ways uh, to do that. Andy, you believe that that the CEO of Barclays has his own network sorted out with it without LinkedIn? I guess so. But it's also about being a leader within your organization. It's people look up. To, in most organizations to their CEO. The CEO brings in the value, brings in the vision of where the, uh, the, the, the let's say the organization is going to. Um, what happens a lot is that when journalists or when the media do an interview with your CEO, they would put on, on the websites, on the blogs, on the whatever it is mentioned online, they would put a link to that person's LinkedIn profile, all right? If they if they have a LinkedIn profile like this and people who want to know more about ING, they come to this and that's what they see. Does that, you know, build the relationship with the brand ING or with the CEO or does that destruct the know, like and trust? And I believe it's the latter case, all right? So that's where I feel like you can do such a better job by creating a better profile than, than just uh, a basic one. Now let's go down to the summary. This is a summary of a guy who is very ambitious, as you can read. It might be too small to read it on your screen, but it says I'm an ambitious all-round SEO uh, guy. And so he goes on and on and on. This is just a summary. I mean, I had a hard time putting it in all in one screen uh, shot to bring it in here to show it to you guys, but it is way over the top to put everything there. All right. So what you can say here is that it is it is too much and as you can see here google 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 a number of google uh products are there so why doesn't he put that in in you know in a listed um way between between commas oh, oops go back uh here so what i say is that it is this is de definitely too much all right um who is going to read this this is let's say a nice tryout for people who want to score higher in google and hopefully also in linkedin now, guess what? When LinkedIn and Google find out, they will punish you and you will get lower uh, in the search results. So don't do that, okay? It's not cool to do that. This is another summary. It starts off really, let's say, decent, and he's an owner and vice president. But if you scroll down a little bit uh, further, his ultimate goal is world domination of the military industrial complex. Specialties are exceptionally good at sarcastic and smart ass remarks, and it gets worse and worse and worse. All right. So I probably think that this guy has a good sense of humor, but doesn't cross, come across like that. All right. Oh my God. This is really, this is really not, not good. All right. If this is your first impression and you are looking for new customers, if you're, if this is your, let's say billboard, it's not even a good one. You are scaring away people. All right. Named not the father after multiple DNA tests on Maury. What does that tell you about this guy? All right. So again, it's not a good example of how I would uh, do it. Simon Hunt is a recruiter in the UK, and what he, I like what he has done. He has uh, published his uh, summary in three parts. So the first part is about the company. This is company branding. This is what the company does. All right. Interesting to, to see that it also puts in a testimonial there. I'm not sure if I would be doing this, um, but what I like is a little bit of company profile here. Company, let's say branding, what is the company about, all right? And preferably everyone who works at Hanson Hunt should have the same text or similar text at least. Because nowadays, when I read people's uh, profiles and read uh, people's summary, I sometimes wonder if they are really working for the same company. Some people are really having contradictory texts uh, there. I go like, hang on, it's, yeah, it is the same brand, but do they really work for the same company? So it's really confusing. So please um, make it so that it is branded um, and all the same for most of the people within your company. The second part here is what is his role? What does he do? So now I know that I learned that he's EMD and one of the founders of the uh, company. And what he's doing is in, setting up a number of partners who are developing new technology, etc., etc. So this is really good. He shares what he's doing. So I know now for what I can get in touch with him, all right? I know that he's not in touch of procurement. I know that he's not in touch of marketing. There are other people on his team doing that. So that clarifies what, he, what his role is at 
the company. And then finally, what I also like about his profile, he puts in here, get to know me. This is a number of keywords where you can find, let's say, something in common or learn the person behind that profile. And, you know, what is really interesting to know is that when people start to connect with you, when people are looking or checking you out, as they say, they're always looking for something in common. So imagine that you also have an NLP background, or so you're also a freak about gadgets or doing some cycling, then you have something in common immediately. And guess what? The know, like, and trust factor goes up at a big level uh, with big steps immediately, all right? So this is one of the things you should look into. Three parts. The first part is company branding. The second part is your role, you as a professional. And the third part is you as a person. All right. So that's one of the things that I want to point out. Doing a summary, make sure that it's still brief and still doable. He's using dividers to make clear that there are different uh, parts. I like that a lot. All right. So the company summary should go on your personal profile as well as on the company account. Kathy, yes, that's a good question. And I would say yes. But on the company profile, it can be more elaborated. Make sure it's just like in this case, it's a little bit too long. To my taste, I would say one or two paragraphs should be more than enough. And in your personal profile, maybe the first paragraph should be uh, should be enough. If you're a global brand, you can do stating the global par uh, positioning first, and then maybe the second paragraph about your department or your business unit where you're in. All right. So you have two paragraphs covering your pro uh, professional branding. I think that should be um, more than enough in your personal profile. Add the summary, all right? When we talk about your expertise later on, experiences, then you can elaborate more about the branding and more about your uh, role in, in, in detail, okay? This is just the summary, okay? Recommendations. A lot of people are giving recommendations to each other, and sometimes it goes back and forward, okay? But this is a particular, let's say, recommendation that, I, that made me laugh. Someone who said can up and make a poor can add up and makes a poor cup of uh, tea, good not great in bed though. I'm not sure if that was meant to be published on his uh, profile, but there he did it. All right, um, it goes way back. Um, it was published in 2010. But the funny thing is that is this how you really would recommend uh, people on a professional platform? I don't think that is really really good. All right. Besides the fact that I'm not a big fan of recommendations because most people are using recommendations in a vague way. Um, here's another example. Um, let me share that with you. I've had the misfortune of working with Dave for the last three months. I honestly have no idea why he was hired. He's a massive pikey. He lies. He's lazy. He steals. He's promiscuous in an offensive way. He wears pajamas in the office, etc., etc., etc. So it goes on and on and on. I'm not sure why Dave would put that on his profile, but it's there and people can read about this. Is this a big joke? I don't know, but this is really, if I would be hiring Dave as a, as a recruiter, then I would be thinking twice before actually getting in touch with him. All right. So that's one of the things. Um, I saw there's a question about languages. Um, yes, LinkedIn can um, allow you to have your profile in different languages. By the way, it's something I encourage to have your profile within the languages, of course, that you speak, but also where your target audience um, is um, speaking. In, all right. So, for example, my profile is in English and in Dutch. I do speak five languages, but I, I do believe that I, I want to focus only on Dutch and uh, English as my, let's say, languages that I do uh, business in. Um, of course, people can ask me French questions and German questions and Hindi uh, questions as well, but I feel it's too too far to also have my profile in these languages. All right, so that's why I focus on Dutch and English profiles uh, only. So, by the way, if you have a profile in two or more languages, make sure you fill them out uh, equally. All right, what a lot of people do is they fill out their, let's say, English. Um, profile 100 percent and then they have a french profile as well and guess what people who are looking at you with their friend with the linkedin french interface and come on your french profile first they will only see the limited profile so if you decide to have a profile in different languages please make sure they're equally filled out all right that's important to um, to know 
All right, so this is another recommendation that I don't uh, like. And as you can see, very funny. Here's an, an example of a recommendation that I feel is more to the point, where it is about his aptitude for aesthetics. He listens, he, he pays um, close attention, he takes that into his design, and he's apparently really experienced with a number of products um, within the, the design uh, world, or what a lot of designers are, are using. So this for me is more or less a recommendation that could um, could work. If you do a recommendation, for example, on a sales guy or a pro uh, project manager, what I would do is I would make it very concrete, all right? I hired Steve the last three years and he's a wonderful project manager. He not only is a people manager, he listens to everyone in his uh, team, but he consistently over delivers. He saved us more than 100,000 pounds a year. He delivered the projects in 90 to 95% of the time schedule that was agreed upon with the customers. These are tangible results. Name figures, name numbers, make sure that you clarify the details if you have clearance, of course, to, deal, to share them. Um, but if you do, these are the things that we're looking for in uh, recommendations, all right? Now, when you say recommendation these days, a lot of uh, people have questions about endorsements. Um, I'm not so sure if I would be asked for, you know, endorse any on viruses, if that is a skill that I, you know, be looking forward to <laughs> to people. Now, chances are tomorrow I'll, I'll be giving um, a, a training on LinkedIn for a um, laboratory, medical laboratory, that they will say, yeah, viruses is one of our key um, um, let's say experiences uh, or expertises as well, but I'm not sure if that's something you want to, you know, go global uh, with. All right, so this is an example. I have another one. Um, does Stephanie really have the, the the skills of the expertise of dangerous doing dangerous drugs? I'm not sure if that's what you want to have on your profile. I'm I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong, um, but uh, this is really hilarious. Um, I mean, so this is the thing that. People set up their own skills, but when you start endorsing uh, people, as you can see here on the screen uh, shot, and, and Karen has a, has a question about that. Uh, it's asking you to endorse people for, yes, I can type in here any other expertise uh, for uh, Stephanie if I want to. So if I say she's uh, really a star at African dance, I can start typing here African dance, and it will be allocated to her uh, skills and expertise uh, set. Of course, it's up to Stephanie to decide whether she would be publishing that yes or no, and she can manage all of the skills and expertise uh, that she has in her profile. So she, it's up to Stephanie to make uh, clear that she would like to have it public uh, or not, all right? Um, what happens a lot, of course, is that a number of these skills and expertise that you're, um, let's say, being endorsed uh, for by other people, um, that they slip through the net. Okay, that they slip through. Um, now, it's really funny to see that endorsements, um, that people start endorsing you for skills that you don't knew that you had them in the first place. So it's really, you know, one of the things that, that I really uh, find funny is that people suddenly come up with expertise that you, that they say that you have, but I didn't know that I had them, um, and they appear on your LinkedIn uh, profile. So make sure that if you are endorsing people, that you endorse them for the right uh, skills and expertise, okay? Um, now, why, I see here a question popping up, why do people then endorse you for skills that you don't have? Well, they think about uh, reciprocating. So what they want is that they you reciprocate them for the same or offer other mm -hmm. skills that they have on their profile, so they look better, all right? So that's why they what they are doing uh, it for. How many skills is a good number, John? That's a very uh, fair question to ask. You can have up to 50 skills. Um, there's no good, um, let's say, number to say, well, um, if you only have one or two or three, I would be doubting if you are the really the right person for me to look for. Even in a sales, even in a hiring uh, perspective, if you have like 20, 25, I would say that's what a lot of people have. If you look at the statistics on LinkedIn, people have on average six uh, skills. So if you have more than six, that will then you're um, then you're uh, fine. Um, again, it's not so much about you know communicating how good you are and what what you're an expert uh, in, but it's also about having the keywords in there on which you want to be found on. All right. One of the things that people mistake LinkedIn for is that they don't recognize 
how good the search engine is all right when people look you up every keyword that you put in your profile you'll be found on all right so if you don't put in the keywords if you don't put any of your skills or any of your expertise is there then you won't be found and again one of the things you can do from a company perspective is that if you are an engineering uh let's say organization full of engineers one of the things you can do is you can ask all your engineers to add the skill engineering towards your uh, their personal profile because one of the things that uh, happens there is that when you can what you can do is that you can see hey um everyone within the company is an engineer or our skills in engineering and guess what linkedin makes an aggregate of all the skills within your company to put that on your company uh, page. One of the things that I that I saw lately is one of the universities um, here in uh, Belgium that they have skill. One of the skills is Dutch and English, and that's because so many people speak those languages and have put that in their um, in their skills and expertise. Now there's a different element on your profile that says that says um, skills. Oh, sorry, says uh, languages where you can indicate what language. So you don't have to put them in skills and expertise uh, anymore. So I'm not sure, sure if that was a business um, university, by the way, if they want to be known for English and Dutch as their top skills, all right? So you better have other skills and expertise uh, there. All right, let's move on with some others. Uh, pole dancing, I, I'm sure that people have this as a profession, but also people have this as a, a hobby and put it on, the, on their uh, profile. I'm not so sure what that would do with the no like and trust factor, um, if people see you're very professional and then they see uh, 25 people endorse you for pole dancing. I'm not sure if that's what you want uh, on LinkedIn. So if you put out your skills and expertise there, make sure that the taglines or the, the, the elements that are there, that these are the things that you want to be um, endorsed uh, for. Okay. Emails. Let's talk about emails. One of the things that you see with emails is that a lot of people are um, sending them with let's say without an invitation actually to connect with you and they start doing some sales straight away so this is an example that um, michael Held, one of our team members has uh, received where um, the guy nitin really dives in straight away um, going for his business explaining how good they are bragging about their their groups and and you know how easy it is for them to find and to do business with you this is really how you want to connect with people i don't think so all right this is for me a wasted email this is almost spamming uh people so don't do that all right it's not a good example of uh now some people get um their tricks up and running and what they do is they they try to lure you in to go to another platform so here's an, an idea of champ tao soon he says well um this is me and i've sent you a message or or on a private email and what happens is when you dive up uh, when you dig in and you find that message, it's a spam message. It's about uh, they try to scam you with, you know, they have like a hundred million dollars sitting in an account and they don't know how to deal with that. And they try to get you um, to claim it so that you get a million or two million or five million uh, from it. And it's just a, a scam. Uh, and this is what is now becoming on, on LinkedIn a practice for some people. They try to get you into, um, into that. So don't fall for that. Um, what is a better way? This is an, an email that I received from um, from Tara, and she couldn't make it at my speech um, a couple of weeks ago at the Professional Speakers Association because she was on a business trip. Um, so she briefly explains what it is that she does, but then she says, I would love to connect uh, with you, and we have someone in common which she knows, and she said that, so she is informed. Okay, she's informed that she couldn't make it, that I was doing a speech, that I would share my slides uh, there. She talked to someone we both have in common. That's already building the no like and trust. Uh, and then one of the things that I like very much is that please let me know if I can return the favor. So always give and receive. That's what, what it's all about. When you start giving, you always uh, receive more and more. And this is what I, what I like. So she has a clear goal for connecting. Uh, with me she really wants to start uh, building a relationship she's interested in my slides and she also is open for returning the favor this is what i like very much um, about an email all right i hope this gives you an idea of how to work with emails if you don't know what emails are by the way emails are 
uh, messages that you can send straight away to anyone on LinkedIn. It only works when you have a paid or a premium account on uh, LinkedIn. Um, of course, most people can only get in touch with the first direction, first uh, degree, second degree, and third degree, or people that you have in common in groups. When you have a group in common, uh, then you can get in touch with them most of the time as well. All right. So that's one of the things. Uh, and the question comes up, of course, Peter, is a paid or premium uh, account necessary? Well, it depends, uh, Peter, on what it is that you do and what you want to achieve. If you are looking for um, new candidates as an employer, then yes, it might be a good idea to upgrade uh, to a premium uh, account because then you can get more access to more uh, people. You can find job seekers uh, as well. If you are looking for a job, you can upgrade to a job seeker um, account. By the way, there are more than 17 different accounts, uh, premium accounts possible on LinkedIn. Okay, So just to give you an idea, there's a broad range of different uh, premium accounts that you can have. Um, again, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Thing here, but what I do want to point out is that when you are doing 80% at least of what we have written in our book, how to really use LinkedIn, then it might be time to upgrade and to find uh, extra functionalities that make sense uh, to you. For example, if you're doing a search, you can only read read the first 100 profiles of your search results. If you have a paid account, you can go up to 300, 500, 700, 900, or even, uh, even more. Of course, what you could do is you can fine tune your search more so you can break it up. For example, if you're searching for someone in the UK, you can also search for someone in the UK in a specific region. So what you could do is you can say, hey, I type in in the postal code WC1, and I want to find people within the uh, um, a radius of 20 kilometers or 20 miles around that, and you can break up the whole country in different areas and find uh, people uh, that way as well. So if you would say, if that's the only reason for me to um, get a premium account, I would say that's not enough to uh, to upgrade, okay? So that's one of the things that is possible when you, uh, when you do upgrade. Invitations, I receive a lot of invitations from people and one of the things that people are often mistaken is that they would get away with a standard invitation. One of the things that is really interesting to see is that a number of people when they are um, when they are online, when they send you an invitation, they don't think about building a relationship. So here's a vet doctor, Peter Morgan. He sends me a standard invitation. Now, what I would do with most people is I would ignore them, or what I would do is underneath this drop down button uh, next to accept, you will find reply don't accept yet, and I would send them a message before I accept to that um, before I accept to that um, invitation. Uh, to ask why he would like to connect uh, with me. Because you see, on my profile, people who read my profile, they will see that I have some rules in place where I don't connect with any, anyone, uh, everyone, okay? And so one of the rules is that people, when they send me a standard invitation, that I, I incline to say no. And why is that? Well, the reason is very simple. If you would send me an invitation, then I guess there is a reason for you to connect with me, right? If you do have a reason to connect with me, but you You don't put in the time to add a personal note to it, um, then I wonder why I would be putting in some some time to you know connect uh, with you. If you don't if you don't do it, well, why should I do it, right? Now some people are unaware of it. Some people are using the mobile platforms on iPad or an iPhone or other platform where unfortunately you can only send a standard message. All right, then you might get away with it. But most of the time I would reply and say, hey, sorry, um, is there a reason why you would be uh, connecting with me or just cruising around or doing you have a particular reason? Um, as you can read on my profile, I'm 
I only connect with people that I've met or I've spoken to or have a specific uh, goal for connecting uh, with me. And then I get a number of responses, sometimes no response, and I'm glad I didn't I say yes, because then I have to remove them from my network again. Sometimes I get a um, response saying, oh, sorry, I didn't know that it's better to add a personal message to it. And from then on, I've educated people doing that, so they're not scaring away some other people that they want to be connected with, or people do have a certain question. Um, yes, I want to hire you as a speaker or a trainer, or yes, I, I have this uh, particular question about LinkedIn and so on and so on. So that's an, an, an idea for you to uh, work with. Now there's another one here, Chase, who sent me an invitation with a proposal to start talking about maybe doing something uh, together, all right? So that's the reason in his uh, invitation right there. And here's another one, um, someone who connected with me after a session that I that I gave uh, last week at the PSA, um, and they want to, you know, they're putting things in practice and they want to connect with me. And then, of course, I would accept them uh, straight away okay so these are the things that I would deal with uh, invitations in a certain way now I also would talk about um, settings before we wrap up uh, this uh, session by the way you know that on our Facebook group um, uh, you can uh, have more discussions and more questions uh, asked of course you can also connect with us on, on, on LinkedIn in, in LinkedIn uh, groups um, one of the things I want to point out is the sessions Sorry, the settings uh, here. Oh, by the way, if you do have a question, Naomi is there, Michael, Mike Clark is there, Michael Haupt is there to help you with it. If you have a commercial question, please talk to Naomi. Uh, she's there to help you in any uh, with any questions you have. So when you go to your settings, and you can find your settings under your picture, it says privacy and settings review. If you click on that, you will get to this uh, screen. And then one of the things you can click on is communications. And one of the things you can then is set the frequency of emails. All right. When you click on that one, you can set one one of the one of the emails that you want that you receive is when people send you an invitation. You can have an an, an individual email, or when people invite. I you to join uh, groups, you won't receive emails or individual emails or weekly e digest emails. You can choose whatever you want, all right? Play around with this. If you don't want to get more emails from LinkedIn or from people inviting you, then tick all these boxes on no email, all right? A lot of people are fed up with the emails they're getting through the platform from LinkedIn. This is one of the settings where you can indicate that you don't want to be receiving any emails uh, from uh, people that are looking at you or doing something or want something from you. All right. Another one is group invitations. Um, when you go to uh, groups and accounts, you will see that there's a how to deal with group invitations. You're open to receiving group invitations or not. Okay, tick the box off if you're not open to group invitations, and then you won't be bothered with people inviting you to uh, groups. All right, I'm sometimes spammed a couple of times a day with people inviting me to uh, to their groups. I'm already a member of. Uh, 40 something groups by the way you can only be a member of 50 groups which i don't recommend unless you're very active on on, on linkedin because no one um no one wants to be very uh, let's say in 50 groups to follow that takes a lot of your uh, a lot of your time people do not answer when we ask why they want to uh, connect the dajana that might be because they're not very active on on linkedin um um, so that might be someone who's not really active, it's just using LinkedIn as a billboard. And so you might have, um, have to be patient or they don't want to be, you know, connecting uh, with you. All right. Uh, Andy, this webinar counts as speaking to me. Yes. So Andy, if you sent me an invitation, I would say yes to you. Uh, of course, if you add a personal note um, to it. By the way, if you do have any other questions, please feel free to use the chat or uh, talk to us in, on, on, on Facebook or on LinkedIn. Um, when searching in LinkedIn, when someone has a common name, how do I search for the person specifically um, uh, who is in that uh, area? A very good question, Caddy. 
Um, let me give you a personal example that I that I came across um, last year. I gave a session in Hong Kong, and there was a, a lady. One of the participants in my training uh, was called Sarah Lee. Okay, I'm not so sure if you heard about Sarah Lee before, but um, when I did the search, I found over thirty five thousand people with that name. All right. Now, one of the reasons is that Sarah Lee is a premium brand, um, but also a lot of people are called Sarah Lee, all right? If I did a search only in Hong Kong, because the session was in uh, Hong Kong, I found 96 people with the same name, Sarah Lee. She didn't had an indication of the company she was working for. She didn't have um, 